recording right now. Here's your host, Alfredo Leon. Thank you, I know this has been more than a week after since the race already occurred, but I still wanted to talk about it anyway. As Kurt Busch won Saturday night, August 18th race at Bristol Motor Speedway, in which he had led the final 13 laps on the green to beat Kyle Larson, who had 30 laps first tires than Bush. Bush scored his first win in 58 races It went to victory lane for the first time since the 2017 Daytona 500. It was his sixth win at Bristol Motor Speedway, but the first since March 2006, when he was driving the two Miller Lite Dodge for Team Penske in that race. That race was also memorable for after when Matt Kenseth spun out Jeff Gordon. Gordon wound up after the race, shoving Kenseth, in which he was put on probation for uh, the rest of the year, I believe. And he had his helmet on still, and that was in that race as well, afterwards. Bristol was also the site of Bush's first career Cup Series win in 2002, when he drove the 97 car for Jack Roush. The top five was routed out by Chase Elliott, Joey Logano, and Eric Jones. After Jones, here's the rest of the top ten. Six is Clint Boyer driving a 14 car for Stuart House Racing. Ryan Blaney finishing 7th driving the 12 car for T. Petsky. Alex Bowen finishing 8th driving the 88 car for Hedrick Motorsports. And his teammate Jimmy Johnson finishing 9th in the 48 car. And Kevin Harvick finishing 10th driving the 4 car for Stuart House Racing. Bush's 30th career win in Cup came with questions surrounding his future in this series after this season, especially with rumors that he'll be leaving Stuart House Racing in favor of Chip Ganassi Racing to replace Jamie McMurray in the one car, who apparently, according to rumors, is also leaving. But Kurt was able to shut those out for the moment. Here is Bush speaking on what it was like to be in that position to win with the fresher tires, courtesy of NBCSN. It was awesome uh, to be in this position. When you race at a short track on Saturday night, it brings back all the memories of growing up as a kid and racing with your dad and your family. And I didn't want to let my dad down. He's here tonight, and my wife said, go out there and go get him, show what it's all about. And uh, it was just perfect with the restarts, and I can't thank Monster Energy enough. This Ford was awesome. And they saw the great fans. This was an awesome, awesome win for us. Bush also spoke about what he thought about the fans as well. These guys are awesome. Everybody here knows what this Saturday night short track's all about. And we got the best fans in sports. So thank you guys. Thank you so much. Good show, huh? Bush kept the lead on the final restart with 13 laps to go after Clint Boyer was unable to get going when he spun his tires. He was one of four drivers, which included Boyer, to stay out following a caution with 29 laps to go. Bush was one of only four to remain in the top five. Boyer finished seventh. Bush also led the five final 24 laps. Nice to see Kurt Busch finally get a victory, especially now when you see a, a dominant Kurt Busch, nobody's going to stop him. And, uh, or confident Kurt Busch, like I, I meant, but nobody's going to stop him, especially now he's got a lot of confidence going into Darlington, which he'll be rocking a throwback paint scheme, similar to the one he finished second with in the, in what was then the closest ever finish in NASCAR history, when he finished second to Ricky Craven in, in an exciting finish in, at Darlington back in 2003 when he was driving for Jack Roush and, and the 97 car and back then what was known as the Winston Cup Series, and Rick Craven was driving a 32 car, the Tide car, which was a pretty iconic scheme, especially after winning that race. It was one of the closest finishes at that time, the closest finish in NASCAR history. And that, that was an exciting finish. And let's see now that Payski could it bring Kurt Luck at Darlington so he could finally win that scheme. We'll see. But he's got confidence. You never know. But we'll see what happens with that and see if he could pull it off. But him finally winning a Bristol first time since 2006, a lot has happened since then. It was then known as the Nexel Cup Series. Then was the Gen 4 car. Jeff Gord was still active. Tony Stewart was still active. They were still on top of their game. A lot of drivers that were still different organizations. Kevin Harvick was still driving for Richard Childress. Matt Kenseth was back in the 17 for Jack Roush. It was a, a lot of things happened since then. And Kurt switched rides since then, going to teams like Phoenix Racing and, and even driving for them. And, and eventually going to now where he's with Stuart Haas, where he's been for the last couple of years since he joined Kevin Harvick in 2014. And he's haven't had as much success since then, especially since the Bristol track was repaved. And a lot of people question that Bristol being repaved. But at least Bush got to win on both versions. As he said, he got to finally win on the new and old configuration of Bristol. That Bristol was ex more exciting, especially with guys bumping and banging. But this Bristol is still pretty good as well. Bristol is just a fun track to go to. And 
And Kurt finally was able to figure out how to win there at Bristol. I I'm glad to see this Bush brother win and not Kyle because I can't stand Kyle Bush for the record, though. But still, though, I, I was the fans were cheering when Kyle Bush was messed up after the race. After he had that incident like on lap three, and then later on, like he had more troubles with the damage and all that, and he could never recover. At fully, he, even though he was really close to recovering it, I'm glad he messed up late in the race. The fans were cheering. And this is a true thing about Kyle. Kyle Bush is an ass. And that's exactly what Brad Kozowski said. I agree with him on that. And Kyle is just not the great driver. But he's a great driver. Don't, don't get me wrong. He's not a great person. And he's just a, a dumbass, for better lack of a better word, but somewhat. But he, he just, you know, just isn't the best type of personality. He can drive, I don't drive, but. Kurt Busch used to be like that at some part, but I don't mind Kurt winning. As long as Kyle doesn't win, Kurt can win as much as he wants. And he's a good driver as well. He's a different Kurt Busch than what he used to be. He used to be arrogant as well, just like Kyle, but he's come a long way. And he's definitely been staying out of trouble, and he's just focusing on racing. And now he's going to be tough to beat, especially now that he's got a win and he's in the playoffs. And he doesn't have to worry about getting that win later on. He was pretty comfortable with points as well. But now with the win, he's good to go. So for Las Vegas so let's see what he could do once he gets there and let's see what he does at Darlington as that'll be the throwback weekend like I said he'll be rocking that paint scheme in which he finished second to Craven in 2003 but that would be something to see if he could win in that and he's got confidence now so let's see if he could keep it going and finally win at Bristol and let's see if he could get to momentum going into the playoffs because he he's going to need it because he's going to have to deal with the big three can he be that fourth guy that open spot like that a lot of people are, are thinking like who's gonna be? Is it gonna be Kyle Larson? Is it gonna be him? Is it gonna be Chase Elliott? Who's who knows? Could it be Kurt Bush? But can he step up his game going into the playoffs, especially since there's a couple of races left? I think it's Darlington and Indianapolis. And I think that's it before the playoffs, if I'm not mistaken. But this is you can come up to the playoffs too. So let's see if Bert Kurt could get some uh, more wins and get some more bonus points and Playoff points and see what he could do going into the playoffs. So let's see what happens there. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to leave a like. If you are brand new, subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next video. And let's see what happens coming forward to the playoffs. So peace.